Now we can kill Patrick. Let's add a text that will cut Patrick's head off. First create a new video track by clicking the empty space in this video track with your right mouse button and press insert video track. Now go to media generators, go to text and then drag the default text preset to the top video track. This is our text menu. You can do pretty much anything with your text here. Let's type Pupunik. Change text font to Tryon Pro, change size to 70 and unselect the B. Now go to effects, change color of the outline to black and change everything to zero. And then change the feather of the shadow to 0 0.800. Whenever you are done with that, I want to make a little animation with the text in the text menu. Press the animate button and now we have our timeline. This is basically the same thing as the event pen crop tool. Create a new keyframe at 6 seconds and keep it selected so we can give it a new effect and color. Go to properties now and change the text color to fully yellow. Then go to effects again and change the width of the outline to 1. So let's see how that looks like. As you can see it will slowly turn from white text without any outline to yellow colored text and a big black outline behind it. Just like we remember it. Good. But we still miss one text, so let's create that one as well. Insert a new view track again first. Select the bubonic text and press Ctrl C to copy it. Now select the top video track and press Ctrl V here. When it asks you to create a new copy of the source media, press OK. Now we simply just change the text to Productions instead of Bubunic. And make sure you do that on both keyframes, otherwise it will change back to Bubunic again. Oh, and switch them, so Bubunic is top and Productions is bottom. That will make more sense. Now we animate the text so they move in from the left to the center and then spread out. So go to the event pen crop tool of the Bubonic text first. Create a new keyframe at 1 second and one at 2 seconds. Now select the first keyframe and drag the F box all the way to the right. And at the third keyframe drag the F box slightly down. Now we select all three keyframes by holding down the shift button and press Ctrl C to copy the keyframes. Now go to the event pen crop tool of the second text and press Ctrl V here. The only change we have to make now is to make the F box going up instead of down at the third keyframe. Then you check if everything looks alright, so if you're satisfied with the movement speed and stuff, then we can move on to the next thing. And that next thing is cutting Patrick's head off! Yay! Oh sorry, does that sound too sadistic? Uh, who cares, it's just Patrick right? Okay, moving on. Let's go to ban the story again. Alright, for this clip we don't need an animation, we only need one frame of Patrick. So let's uncheck the animate box, change the state to standing 1 and change the face state to pain. Then we're cut with hypercam for a few seconds and then blah 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 blah, I'll just go quickly through this crap again, I think I explained it enough for today. Alright, so when it's ready to use, it's time to explain about the mask. First make a copy of the clip and place it above the other clip. So you will have to insert a new video track for that. Let's make a mask in the bottom clip first. Go to the events pen crop tool and check the mask box. Then select the anchor creation tool and now you can draw a mask around specific places of the clip. So if we only want to see Patrick's body, we draw a mask around his body. Oh crap, zoom in a little bit first at the other keyframe, because you can zoom in at the mask keyframe. Alright, here we go. Then we do the same thing at the copy, but now we draw a mask around the head. Alright, so now I can move the head away from the body. Now we can let the head get smashed away when the text flies in. So let's try to do that. Add a new keyframe a short moment later and then you can move the F box all the way here. So the head will fly away to the top right. Just play a bit with the timeline and see when you're happy with the speed the head flies away. Just a little tip, right here are the solo and mute buttons. 
With this button, you can mute one track down, so you won't see it on the preview anymore. With this button, you can solo one track, so you focus on that track only. This is very useful when the preview is lagging really bad, and you can't see shit what's happening anymore. I think it looks a bit more realistic if you also make the head spin around or flying away. In the event pan crop tool, you have this dot in the center of the F box. The F box will always rotate around this dot. If you keep the dot in the center, it will just rotate on its position. But if you drag the dot away, all the way here, the F box will make much larger circles. We must make sure that the F box rotates around the head of Patrick, so we drag the dot in the center of Patrick's head. And do the same at the other keyframe, but make it rotate a few times here. Play a bit with that and move on when you're done. Now we go look for some blood splashes. Go to your browser and type in www.detonationfilms.com. Click on the image to enter. Go to effect stock footage. Click right here that's called page K1. Scroll down a bit and then finally click download free zip file. If you found the file in your download folder, unzip it. And move the blood splash to your special effects folder. And then drag it into Sony Vegas. Insert the new video track, add widescreen, add chroma gear, but change the low threshold to 700 now and leave high threshold like that, and add a little blur of 20. I'm not very happy with the color of the blood so I'm going to add a video effect called brightness and contrast, and drag the darker more contrast preset on the blood splash. There, perfect. Now we look for the right moment when the blood is about to splash. Right here. And end it 14 frames later. Also add a fade out of 5 frames by click and drag the right corner of the clip to the left. And now we add it in the event pan crop tool, so the blood splash has the right scale and position. Let's check it out. Hmm, well, I don't know what you think. But I think it looks perfect, so this means we are done with the animation. Now we can add the sound effects. People always ask me where to get sound effects, but it's much easier than you think. If you want a screaming sound, type in Google Screaming WAV and pick your favorite scream sound at one of those websites. If you want a punch sound, type in Punch WAV. If you want blood sounds, type in Blood WAV. So take your time and go find these sounds now. Once you're happy with your sounds you found, you can move them all to your sound effects folder and drag them all into Sony Vegas and place them where the action happens. Screaming sound when Patrick starts screaming and the punch and blood sound when the text hit Patrick's head. I know I also got my theme song at the end when you see the bubonic productions text, but I can't remember where I found that song, so you just have to be creative with that one and pick your own theme song. Oh, and don't forget the music we downloaded before. I'm now quickly going to edit everything because some clips are too long. Now for some finishing touch, you can add some video effects. 
like a blur on the head of Patrick when it flies off. And the light rays and lens flare on the Bobunic Productions text. And animate the background color to black and white. And smooth the keyframe interpolation of the third keyframe of the Bobunic Productions text. And now you're done. The last thing you do now is go to File, click Render As, and save it as Windows Media Video. Give it a nice name, save it to your favorite destination folder, and press Save. Then you wait till it's done rendering, it will probably take 10 minutes or less. And when it's done rendering, you can enjoy the video. Thank you very much for following this tutorial about how to animate in Sony Vegas. I hope you learned a lot and that you could understand everything I said. Because of my lack of English it was sometimes very difficult for me to explain it the right way. So I hope you understand and take it easy on me. Oh, and can you guys do me a favor? If you were one of the people that actually followed this whole tutorial, fully made the Patrick animation. I would love to see how you did it. So why don't you just upload it to YouTube and share it with me. I'm very curious. And if you want an extra challenge, try to create a new Patrick killing animation. But this time I want your idea of how you would kill Patrick. See if you can do that. And if you made one, I would love to see it. And I will feature it on my channel. Or maybe I will make a video where I show all Patrick killing animations you guys made. Who knows, let's see what happened first. One last thing I want to say is that I love each and any one of you that subscribe to me. You are a true audience and I have a great time here at YouTube, thanks to you guys. I miss the old days where I could upload a video every month or two and feel the excitement of me releasing the video to YouTube. I really do, but because of my ridiculous busy schedule with school and life, I'm just simply not able to make videos anymore. But I will put my greatest effort in finishing Maple Action 7 at the end of this summer. And oh boy, that's going to be a hell of an episode. I will try my best, I promise. Alright, it's finally done rendering. Let's see the result. Well, it's been fun talking to you guys. Thanks once again. And maybe you will see me sooner than you think. You probably have no idea what the hell that means, but you will find out. <laughs> Alright, take care everyone.